Yeah. Yeah. Something I think, and that's all it is. Took I think we started looking at. Um, I mean, and this is, I think, your also your skill to yeah. make it understandable. Well, that I learned directly from Lionel because uh -huh. he was. He was the best lecturer I ever heard, and he still is. He's way better than me in many ways. So he's, and that's what I, I modeled myself to some extent yeah. on him. He's the very, because he, he I, 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 I will go into depth in certain things, but I'm not a biochemist, and he's a brilliant biochemist, which to me is it's too difficult, it's like mathematics. Yeah, yeah, it's something I think yeah. it's too difficult for me to understand. I can understand physiology, which is a bit yeah. more basic, but he's able to take the most complex biochemistry and produce a diagram which puts all the essentials there, oh. and then you fully understand it. And most, if, if, you, if people don't understand, I didn't yeah. understand myself, yeah. obviously, if I can't. Exactly. Is... Now, you're absolutely right, because you see, I never thought that I was particularly clever, <laughs> and that I would, I, I can see the future. I know what's going to happen mm -hmm. in the future. That's my strength. Mm -hmm. a vision. I can, I've got the vision, on, and as soon as I read something, I'll say, okay, this is the truth, and this is what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. But it often takes me a long time to get to a concept, so I'll work on it, work on it, and then suddenly it'll appear, and then I, I fully understand it. Mm -hmm. And when I fully understand it, then I'm able to explain it properly. Mm -hmm. But the key is that unless I can understand it fully and then explain it to other people, then I don't understand it. And I yeah. keep working until I, I feel I've got that understanding. And I think, is it that you have to find the right metaphors to present how do you do this how do you work on this yeah it's right to I develop mean, this like well, you have now this concept of evolution yeah. which of course can be always yeah. questioned yeah, and you sure. can say okay what is with the woman the woman and under stress the reproduction is yeah. uh how do you call it? impaired impaired yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and things like this yeah. but um uh, you have to have these kind of mm. mind concepts how do you work on yeah. this and how do you dare to, yeah. to push, push yeah. these concepts out into the open like yeah. this? <laughs> and I think the answer is that my brain is never still. So at night I'm working on it. So that, and then eventually it'll come right and then I'll be able to explain it and I'll draw up, I'll get the analogy yeah. and then I'll be able to yeah. explain it. Yeah. But I'm always looking for the analogies that make it more easy to understand yeah. for different people. Because this is, I think, a very tricky thing. Yeah. Because, it takes a lot of yeah, hard work, and yeah. it's something you have to work on all the time. Yeah. I think a lot of people are, are what we call dilettantes. They, they scratch the surface. Yeah. And, but the, the, the beauty of this is that once you scratch the surface and go deeper, then it just gets more exciting all the time. Like exactly. And then, I mean, I would love to understand everything in, on the earth, and, but, but I'm not, never going to learn it. Yeah. I'm only ever going to understand a tiny fraction of it. Was there a special incident in your life that made you ask the questions you ask today? That there was definitely the case in 1981, which then we proved that she'd overdrunk during mm -hmm. exercise. The, the irony was that in, that happened in June 1981, and the month before, I'd written an article saying that when you're running, you must drink as much as you possibly can. Ah, yeah. okay. And so then, then I realized I could never be as confident of my opinions in the future. And so that then I started looking into it, and then I looked at the basis for the whole theory. And it turned out that two South Africans, who in fact had wanted to employ me on the chamber in the mines in South Africa, had in 1969 said that the more dehydrated you become, the higher your body temperature, and the greater your risk of, of having a heat stroke. And then I looked at those data, and I thought, well, actually, they're wrong. Mm -hmm. they, they did not prove that. And by then I was beginning to understand the scientific method. And they hadn't proved causation, they had just proved an association. And then I began to realize that association doesn't prove causation. And then I began to understand that you have to have randomized controlled clinical trials mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. multiple interventions mm -hmm. and so on and so forth to study causation. And so then slowly I was teaching all the time and then I could start incorporating that into my teaching. And so I was, that was another beauty, as I'm predominantly a teacher, and a researcher. I'm not a clinician. And that the beauty of that is you're always mm -hmm. interacting with students and they're always asking difficult questions mm -hmm. because they don't understand. And then you think, why did you ask that question? And then you suddenly realize, okay, this is because I didn't explain to you properly and you've got this wrong impression or the wrong interpretation. And, and one of the, the real problems in science today is this association that people don't understand. 
association doesn't prove causation. Mm-hmm. But most of what you read in the media is this causes that, and it's based on association, not not on yeah. randomized trials. Yeah.